Shalom. Today we're going to talk about the various forms of the plural in Hebrew. And there are some words that are always plural and some words that are always dual, and we'll see what that means in a moment. There are two common endings for plurals, one for masculine nouns and one for feminine nouns. And this is the ending for the masculine noun, where the X stands for the last letter of the noun, and then we're going to add this ending Chirik goes under the last letter, a yud and a mem. So for example, if we have the word sus, which means horse, the plural is going to be susim. We just add that ending. If we have the word for king, melech, the plural will be mlachim. And ben turns to banim. And you probably know this already. There's some slight vowel shifts, but basically we had that im ending. Feminine plurals will end in ot. Cholem vav and atav. And these are noun endings. This has nothing to do with verbs at the moment. We're just talking about nouns. So if you have a female horse, that's susa, and the plural is susot. If you have a queen, that's malka, the plural is mlakot. The word for daughter, bat, becomes banot. They all end in ot. There are several cases of words which take a feminine ending, even though they're a masculine noun, or a masculine ending, even though they're a feminine noun. So here's two examples. The word av means father. It clearly looks like a masculine noun. It's a father. It is a masculine noun. But the plural is avot. It takes a feminine plural. The word dvora means a bee. Bzz, bee. It's feminine. It looks feminine. It is feminine. But the plural is dvorim with a masculine ending. You just have to memorize these as they come up. Now, there are some words that are always in plural, even when there's only one of them, and that is the word for face, panim. Genesis 32, 30. And Jacob called the name of the place, Pnei El, for I have seen God face to face, panim el panim, and my life is preserved. Exodus 25, 30. And it shows the Young's literal translation so you can get a better feeling of what that means. And thou hast put on the table of the presence the showbread, sometimes it's spelled shoebread, before me continually. It is the bread of the face, the presence, the face of God. Second Kings 14.8 Then Amaziah sent messengers to Jehoash, the son of Jehoahaz, son of Jehu, king of Israel, saying, Come, let us look at one another in the face. Proverbs 15, 13. A merry heart makes a cheerful countenance, that's your face, but by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. So even if there's more than one face being referenced, there is no extra different word for face. It's always the same, panim, and it's always in this plural form. Isaiah 25, 8. He will swallow out death in victory. And the Lord Jehovah will wipe away tears from off all faces. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth, for Jehovah has spoken it. Ezekiel 1, six. Every one had four faces, and every one had four wings. The idea of the physical face is sometimes understood to be the human being, the person. Deuteronomy 1.17. You shall not respect, and that is the verb nechar, persons, panim, in judgment, but you shall hear the small as well as the great. You shall not be afraid of the face of a man, for the judgment is God's, and the cause that is too hard for you, bring it unto me, and I will hear it. Deuteronomy 10.17 For Jehovah your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and terrible which regards, and here the verb is nasa, to lift up, not persons, to lift up somebody's faces, to have regard for them. In this case, he doesn't regard the people, nor takes reward. So if you're familiar with uh, what is called the Aaronic benediction, the last line, it says, Vayisa Yehovah panav elecha, and the Lord will lift up his face, in other words, to you, He's going to have regard for you. Aside from a physical, real face of a person, we have it used in a literary sense. Genesis 1-2.
and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So the water doesn't have any face, but we have this idea that it's a surface area. Genesis 4, 5, But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect, and Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. This is how you form the possessive form for face of something. It is a face of him, panav. We drop the, the final mem and add the pronoun. Another word which always appears in plural is chayim, life. You're going to see it as an adjective and as a noun. As a verb, the root is also chaya with a hay, but we'll see how it's used as a noun and as an adjective. Genesis 2, 7. And Yehovah God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Chayim. Mishmat Chayim. This is the noun. It's the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Here the living is modifying the noun soul. And as an adjective, it's going to decline for the soul, nefesh, which is feminine. It becomes nefesh chaya. Genesis 3.17 And unto Adam he said, Because you have hearkened unto the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it, cursed is the ground for your sake. In sorrow shall you eat of it all the days of your life. The life of the man, chayim, it's plural. Genesis 3.22 And Yehovah God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever, we got to throw him out of here. Genesis 7.11 In the 600th year of Noah's life, of his lifespan, his chayim, it's plural, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were opened. So whether it's one life or many lives, they always appear in the plural chayim. Exodus 1.14 And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage, in mortar, in brick, in all manner of service in the field. All their service in which they made them serve was with rigor. Second Samuel 1.23 Saul and Jonathan were lovely and pleasant in their lives during their lifetimes, and in their death they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles, and they were stronger than lions. So maybe you are thinking that you know a noun, which is always in plural, and that would be Elohim. And mostly, mostly, most of the time it is, but it does have a singular, and the singular is Eloha. We see both of them in Deuteronomy 32.7. They sacrificed unto devils, not unto God, Eloha, to gods, Elohim, whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up whom your fathers feared not. We see even the singular is used to address our God, and the plural, which we usually associate with that being our God, is used to associate with foreign gods, false gods. Now there is a special ending for things that come in pairs. This is rare, but it does occur in other languages. We see that we get a patach under the last letter, we get a yud with a chirik and a mem sofit. It's an ayim, an ayim ending. So some things that come in pairs are body parts. All your dual body parts are feminine, but they take this special dual ending. So yad becomes yadayim. It's not yadim, it's not yadot, yadayim. Regel becomes raglayim. Ozen, your ears, oznayim. Ayin, your eye, becomes a nayim. And it doesn't matter how many feet there are, it's always in the dual ending. For example, Leviticus 11.23, But all other flying creeping things which have four feet, it's still raglayim. There's no special ending because it's four feet or two feet. It's always raglayim. Shall be an abomination unto you. In Genesis 43.24, And the man brought the men into Joseph's house and gave them water and washed their feet him their feet, and he gave their asses provender. The construct form for the dual is the same as it would look for the plural. When we're adding the personal pronoun at the end, the hem, we just drop the final mem from raglayim, and we add the personal pronoun there. 
rag le hem. There's no special way of forming the possessive of dual nouns. This ending, this dual ending, is also used specifically when talking about certain units of time, and there are two of them. Yom means day, and if there's many days, it will be written yamim. But if it's specifically two days, it will be yomayim. Shavua week has a plural, Shavuot, but if it's two weeks specifically, Shavuayim. Chodesh also has a plural, Chodeshim, but two months is Chodshayim. Shana a year, the plural for Shana is, uh, looks irregular, right? Shana is feminine, looks feminine, but it takes a masculine plural, Shanim. But when we talk about two of them, we have Shnatayim. And you can find examples, I think, of all of these, except perhaps the two months in Tanakh. If you look up two days, you'll find places where it is translated Yomayim. There are words which always have a dual ending. It's not just plural, a dual. And the first of these is Mayim, water. Genesis 1-2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Genesis 16:7. And the angel of Jehovah found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way to Shur. So sometimes it's translated plural waters, sometimes just one water, but in Hebrew it is always dual. Why are there two waters? Genesis 1:7. And God made the firmament and divided the waters, which were under the firmament, from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. So there are two waters, one up, one down. Now we're going to look at a phrase which combines two of the words we've been discussing, mayim, water, and chayim, which means living. Leviticus 14.5, And the priest shall command that one of the birds to be killed in an earthen vessel over running water. So living water is water that's running, and it's constantly flowing and streaming and bringing fresh water through. Leviticus 15, 13. And when he that has an issue is cleansed of his issue, then he shall number to himself seven days for his cleansing, and wash his clothes, and bathe his flesh in running water, and shall be clean. Mayim Chayim. Numbers 19, 17. And for an unclean person, they shall take of the ashes of the burnt heifer of purification, and running water, living water, shall be put thereto in a vessel. And in Jeremiah, God refers to himself as the fountain of living waters. Jeremiah 2.13 For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, Mayim Chayim, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. Jeremiah 17.13 Yehovah, the hope of Israel, all that forsake you shall be ashamed, and they that shall depart from me shall be written in the earth, because they have forsaken Yehovah, the fountain of living waters. It's kind of interesting that in the scene where the woman is taken in adultery, Yeshua squats down and writes in the earth. And so we see that Yeshua himself also refers to this idea of this living water. In John 4:13-14. Yeshua answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinks of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life, living water. John seven thirty seven thirty eight. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Yeshua stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. He that believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. The other word which is always in the dual is the word for heavens, Shemayim. Genesis 1.1, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Genesis 1.26, and God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, the fowl of the heavens, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. And why would there be two heavens? First Kings eight twenty seven. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? 
behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain you, how much less this house that I have built in. I pray this is helpful to your studies. Until next time, tasimetainayim al hashamayim. Keep your eyes on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.